So we're going to look at how to calculate the zero of a polynomial or any function from using Newton's method. Now, Newton's method is an iterative process whereby you guess a solution to the function of, that you think is a zero, um, hopefully something nearby, and then you iterate using this formula. And the formula is going to, in most cases, uh, get you closer and closer and closer to the correct value of the zero. And uh, basically you, you figure out there's a tolerance that you, you know, how, how accurate do you want your zero to be? And uh, then you, you stop after the number stops changing after a certain point as a good enough solution. Now, Newton's method doesn't work in every possible circumstance. There are circumstances in which Newton's method will not work, where it, you will get stuck or you will go off to infinity. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, if you run into that problem, um, the best thing to do is simply to try a different starting point and then try again. Um, it's certainly possible that you may have a function that has no zero, that has no place where it crosses the x-axis. Um, so sometimes it can be helpful to graph the function in advance. Uh, if you have more than one zero in a function, you will have to start at multiple different places in order to get the function to converge to each of the individual zeros. So um, you should not assume that because you found one zero that you're done. Um, again, graphing the function can be really helpful, but uh, this method doesn't require that you be able to factor or use crazy formulas or anything to get a good enough value for your zero. So we're gonna look at Newton's method with one particular function. Uh, in this case, I'm using x cubed minus three x squared plus 11 x minus eight. Turns out this function has only one zero. So when we find the zero, we will have found all of the zeros. Uh, cubic functions, of course, can potentially have up to three zeros. So again, it's it's useful to graph the function in your calculator. Um, so at least you have some idea of how many zeros there are uh, before uh, you proceed. But um, we are, we're going to start with an initial guess for this function. And so my initial guess, x of zero, I'm gonna let to be one. And what we need to do, that's our x sub n, that's our initial starting point. And then we're gonna plug the value we have here into the function, but also into its derivative. So I'm gonna to need to find the derivative of my function, uh, which is gonna be three x squared minus six x plus 11. And so f of x sub zero is going to be one cubed is one minus three times one is three plus 11 minus eight is going to be is going to be one. And then I'm going to repeat with the derivative, plug in the function, um, plug in x equals one into my function, my derivative, um, that's gonna give me three times one minus six plus 11, which is going to give me eight. And so my next point in the sequence and this is an iterative process, so this is just step one, is going to be my initial value x sub zero minus my function evaluated at my first guess divided by my derivative evaluated at my first guess, which is going to be seven over eight, which is 0 0.0875. And then what I would do in order to calculate x sub two is I would repeat this process. So I have my 
0.875 minus f of 0 0.875 divided by f prime of 0 0.875. And I would continue this process. That would get me another value in the sequence. And I would keep going until I my, my number stopped changing. Now, this can be a tedious process. Um, it's certainly doable by hand, uh, unless you have a lot of steps. Um, this one converges pretty quickly, but it sometimes it can, it can take a few steps. And as I said, it is a little bit tedious. So what I've done um, is you can, what you, and what you can do is you can create an Excel spreadsheet that can do your calculations for you. Once you set up the formulas, then it makes it very easy to just iterate however many times you need. Um, so we're gonna switch over to Excel so I can show you how I set it up. And so basically what I did, I, I this is the number of steps and I just numbered them however many long, however long I needed. Um, usually you don't need usually more than four or five or six steps. Uh, unless it's going to go off to infinity um, or it's not going to converge at all. But um, this is just to keep track of how many steps I've I've used. And uh, my X of N is my initial starting guess. And so I used one for this example. In the F sub X column, I'm going to use the cell reference as my variable for my x sub n, and I'm gonna just calculate the value of the function at that point. So you can see here in the formula bar, this says b2, which is the location of my one, uh, cubed minus three times b2 squared plus 11 times b2 minus eight. And again, remember b2 is basically just standing in as my variable in this iteration. And so I find the value of the function, which is agrees with the value we found when we did it ourselves. And then same thing for f prime, I found the derivative and then I plugged in the value of my initial step into this function, three times b2 squared minus six times b2 plus 11. This was the value of our derivative. Um, and here I'm replacing x with the cell reference. And it, again, it agrees with what we calculated on the previous value, the previous uh, work, hand work, um, that the value of the derivative is eight. And then I use my formula here to generate Newton's method formula, the whole formula, which is my initial starting value minus my function evaluated at that point divided my, my derivative evaluated at that point. And we got the same 0.875 that we got in the previous uh, work example. Now, the only thing left to do here basically is that what we want is we want to start the next line at this place we ended on the previous line. So we're going to let this cell value be the next x of n. And then the rest of these formulas, we're just going to can't copy down to the next line. And you can see that what happens is that the function value updates at the new location. The derivative also updates at the new location. And then I get a new estimate for my zero. And so the, if we were to go back to the, the doing this by hand, we had worked out the notation for this solution, but we, we, all we have to do is evaluate it and we would get an answer that is this number. And then to continue the process, we would just copy this down. Basically, again, until this number stops changing, we can already see that it's basically stopped moving. Um, in fact, if I take it one more step, you can see that the original function has basically decided it is exactly zero. And when we're subtracting a value that is zero divided by any number, it's not going to change. It's because it's just zero. So we have basically reached the limit of where this zero is going already. And so we can report then that our zero value is 0 0.875243.
and um, we could we could increase the number of decimal places that are displaying here. But four or five, or in this case, six decimal places is usually more than sufficient. Um, you can tell that it, these two stages, it wasn't quite um, settled, but this probably is accurate out to far more decimal places than uh, we normally require. So again, it, most of that val values won't converge quite this quickly, but this one converged rather quickly. If you needed to take it a few more steps, you can just keep copying down the formula and it will eventually settle down or it will be clearly bouncing around and not going anywhere, which is a, an example where maybe there is no zero um, or it will run off to infinity in some cases. Most of the time it will converge to some zero. Um, if I change the initial starting value, I can recalculate this as though it were starting from a different initial guess. So for instance, if I started at two, um, the number here will eventually converge to the same value. If I start at negative one, it will also eventually converge to the same. It'll take a little bit longer. You can see we're not, um, the, the function is not yet at zero, but we're already at the point where uh, we're accurate to six decimal places with the same answer that we had before. So this function has only one zero. So every initial guess um, will either converge to the zero or if it's too far away, it may fly off to infinity. But um, other functions, again, if you change the initial guess, if they have more than one zero, they may converge to a different zero than the one that you started with. So uh, those initial guesses can be important when you have multiple zeros. Okay. 